Today's project will be replacement of the stator in my 1975 Mercury Trail Twister 440. I just got this one back from Hutech Engineering. Scott rewound it for me. He's got it complete. So the first thing you need to do is set your meter to 200 and then to check the high speed windings ground to the stator and check the blue wire which is supposed to be about 76 ohms and it's at 77.3 so that is good and then you set it to 200k and then to check the low speed windings you ground and go to the yellow wire which is supposed to be about 2.7 now that's the low speed windings which are the ones that usually fail and 2.7 is where it's supposed to be so this is a brand new stator as I said rewound so it is ready to go and we check it and verify and everything looks good when they start to get lower 2.7 they start to go down then they are actually starting to fail anything below 2.6 is starting to fail okay so now we have the meter set to 200 and we will go red to blue for the high speed windings and black on the meter to the case and I got about it's ranging from 73 to 68 it's supposed to be about 76 so it's a little low but not too bad then we'll switch over to 200k and we will put the red wire from the meter to the yellow wire which is the low speed windings and the black from the meter to the case and we are reading a ground we are supposed to have 2.7 ohms but we're reading a direct ground so this is an issue I assume that's why it does not work. So I'm making this video in my trailer because I, uh, my garage is kind of a mess and I don't have space in there, too many other projects going on. But it's about 35 degrees out today, so the weather is pretty nice. It shouldn't be too much of a problem, shouldn't be too much of an issue. This is about a three to four hour job to be able to do this. The exhaust has to come off, the motor has to basically be semi removed from the motor plate so you got to unbolt it from the uh, snowmobile and then tip it up because there's one bolt down in the bottom that you have to get at that you can't get at it's below the motor plate um, have to remove all the ignition coils the starter also have to remove the flywheel and then after you have the flywheel removed you can remove the stator but do not remove the trigger coils because the trigger coils are what set the timing now I can get in and remove the CD box you can remember where the wires go or you can take a picture with your camera if you haven't done this before I would suggest you take a picture I try to take a picture on everything before I do it that way I can remember where everything goes because I can go back to my camera and verify now we can remove the recoil which is a little bit difficult to get at the bottom bolt down here so you'll see that I'm using a quarter inch set for that because the socket fits in much better motor mount plate is a little bit in the way down there upper edge of it now I will remove the recoil hub
Again, a little easier to get in with a quarter inch. Set. So you can get the socket fully on the bolt head. Now the rest of the Allen heads can come out around the outside of the case cover. I believe there's three of them. These two up here and one down below there. The one down there you're going to have to use a regular Allen wrench because you can't get in with anything else. Then you can remove spark plugs so it's a little easier to turn the engine over while working on it. You can see my little nut locking plate here has been used plenty of times. Right tool for the right job, right? That's what they say. Until you don't have a chisel that's thin enough. And you gotta get it started with a screwdriver. And when you need a screwdriver, you don't have a screwdriver. Bend this plate back so you can get at the nut. Verify you have the right size socket, which in this case is a inch and an eighth. You can actually use the socket to bend the plate back the rest of the way. Just tap it a little bit lightly. Now then we're going to use a air ratchet impact to uh, Loosen up our flywheel nut. Now any kind of a steering wheel puller flywheel puller, any generic puller like that will fit for removing the flywheel. Just needs to be straight across from each other and it's a standard 5 16 18 bolt that goes in there. Now you only want to thread these in like 5, 6 threads. If I remember right these may have uh, they may bottom out inside of there, but you don't want to do sometimes when you're pulling a flywheel, they run all the way through, and if you run it all the way through in to the coils inside, you can wreck the coils. You do want to get them both at about approximately the same depth so that when you're pulling on a flywheel, you're pulling straight. I got a flat end on here going flat and square against the end of the crankshaft and it usually doesn't take too much to get it off and off comes the flywheel then you can take your puller off because you're done with that and now you can actually see the stator but in order to get the wiring back there out you need to finish pulling off the case half and as I said there is a bolt back in here that is actually below this motor mount plate so we will have to pull the motor mount plate up so we can get at the bottom and unbolt the motor from the motor mount plate 
then at that point in time we'll be able to remove the rest of this case and remove the stator. Okay, now these motor to motor mount plate bolts, which are 9 16 bolts, don't need to be completely removed. You only need to loosen them up so that you can lift the flywheel side of the motor up a little bit from the motor plate so that you can get at that last bolt underneath there. So, what I do is lift the engine up and put a block of wood or two underneath here. that I can get at those bolts. Obviously, you don't want to uh, have it drop and pinch your fingers. And you got to be able to get at the bolts. There are four of them. Now you can get a block in between the motor and the motor plate so that you have space here and with a quarter inch socket set you can get up in and get on that nut get that nut and lock washer off back there. Okay so there's one, two, three, four, five nuts and lock washers that need to come off and then that cover can come off. Swivel sockets make a world of difference for this task because again there's not a lot of room in here. In fact the upper bolt up in here you will need to take out with a box wrench because there's not even enough room for a swivel socket on that one. Okay, now the case should be ready to split this side cover off of here. There it is. You might want to spin your fan over at that point in time just to see how the bearing is, make sure it's not too loose. Because if you would have to replace a bearing in your fan you'd have to go through this exact same process all over again and it's enough to do it once without doing it a second time. So there's your stator and there's four bolts one two three four that you need to take out for the stator and if you look back here they're five sixteenths if you look back here there's going to be two screws one above and one below 180 degrees apart those you do not want to take loose Before we go to put this back together, we want to verify our trigger coils are good. So I'm going to go white to green, and then I'm also going to test red to green. So on white to green, I'm reading 30.9, it's supposed to be 30, so that's good. And that was white to green, so now we'll go red to green. And that's 30.2 and it's supposed to be 30. So my trigger coils are good. I'm ready to go to start reinstalling the new stator.